do you head to your local pool or your local lake, get changed, then just jump straight on in for a swim? I mean, that sounds pretty logical, right? But actually, swimming non-stop could be slowing you down. I know, that sounds like a crazy idea, but I'm here to explain why that could be happening to you. I gotta say, I'm actually pretty guilty of this, particularly in the open water season. Sometimes it's just nice to jump on in and get swimming. But this can be a slippery slope to getting slower. Before we get on to some of the tips and ways to avoid that, please do give our channel subscribe if you're not doing so already. Perhaps you've enjoyed some of our previous videos or finding today's topic quite interesting. Give us a subscribe at the end of the day. That is how we continue to make all these lovely videos for you. Well, probably the most obvious has to be fatigue. If you do anything continuously and for a long period of time, then you are going to get fatigued, you're going to get tired, and with that tiredness and fatigue, things start to slip, like your technique or your form. And as your technique starts to slip, things start to become harder and slower. Now, in some sports, like cycling, for example, it's quite good to practice cycling whilst fatigued, and it is while swimming to a degree, but it's a very fine line. With swimming, it is incredibly technical sport, and as that technique starts to slip, and you continue to swim with that bad technique, you could be ingraining that bad technique. Obviously though, swimming in whatever structure you choose will bring on fatigue, you will get tired eventually, but if you do just swim continuously, it is going to bring that on far quicker and therefore then it starts to affect your stroke far sooner. For instance, if you are swimming continuously, you might start to find that your legs start to tire and therefore they start to drop. Your core will get tired and by your legs dropping, then you're putting more strain on the arms. They start to get tired. They may start to get shorter in the length of the stroke, choppier. You then may start to struggle to keep that elbow up. That starts to drop. Your pull starts to weaken so the hand starts slipping through the water. As a result, you start to get lower in the water. You start having to bring your head round higher to take that big breath. You get the picture, it affects your stroke, and therefore you start to get slower. The next one, I mean, I might be talking to myself here, but I believe there's a bit of a fine line between finding that zen and chilling out in the water and perhaps getting a little bit bored. Now, of course, this will vary from person to person depending on the location you're swimming in and your why, but if you're just heading to the pool and aiming to get in X amount of lengths in set amount of time, I'd imagine that boredom is going to set in far quicker than, say, if you're able to go and swim in a lovely turquoise ocean with colourful sea life swimming beneath you. Unfortunately for us here in the UK, it does tend to be that former and that can be a big issue. I mean, even those most motivated athletes and with the best willpower, you've got to admit that following that black line up and down the swimming pool and doing roly-poly every 25 metres can get a little bit tedious. And with boredom, you can start to become slightly more disengaged and therefore you may start to slow down, even if you don't really realize it. And in a worst case scenario, you get so bored and fed up with swimming that you start missing the obsession or not turning up at all. And of course that is gonna slow you down further. Now, of course, when we're swimming, we have our heads down in the water and as a result, have no idea how fast we're swimming. Now, a top elite swimmer is pretty dialed into their pace. They'll probably be able to tell you within a second as to how fast they're swimming per 100 meters. And that is because they're super dialed in. But for us mere mortals, we have no idea. And we rely heavily on the pace clocks on the side of the pool or our sports watches. But as we swim continuously, they're pretty hard to check unless we're gliding and glancing at our watch momentarily or pausing at the end of the pool and doing a very, very slow turn to look at the pace clock. It's pretty hard to do. And then if we go into the open water, that's even worse. We have no idea how fast we're swimming. And quite often, our pace starts to drop and we start to get slower. Now I hear you already, you're probably saying, yeah, but because I have no idea, I might be swimming faster. Well, I'd hazard a guess that more often than not, when you have no idea how fast you're swimming, you're actually going slower. Next one, nutrition. Now, I'm not suggesting that you need to be taking energy gels or bars on whilst you swim, but 
A big misconception is that you don't sweat when you swim. I'm afraid to say you do, and probably quite a lot. It's just washed off you in the swimming pool. Lovely thought, isn't it? Now, if you are swimming non-stop, of course, you're not able to rehydrate, and you may start to feel the effects of that and start to slow down. This final one probably shouldn't be a factor that makes you faster or slower in the water, but I believe it is, or at least it is for me, and that is socializing. By stopping every so often during a swim, it allows you to have a quick chat with your friends and other swimmers. Obviously, only for a short amount of time. You don't want to be stopping for too long, but that makes me happy. And a happy swimmer is a fast swimmer, right? Okay, so lots of reasons as to why you should stop swimming non-stop. But now, how do you go about that? Well, the simple answer is start breaking your swims up and start stopping. That will allow you to swim further without becoming so fatigued. That will allow you to maintain that good technique and form, ultimately allow you to swim faster, staying on top of your nutrition, perhaps a little bit of a social element too. But by breaking your swims up, the big one is that it'll allow you to start following some structured swim sessions. Now this depends obviously ultimately on what you are aiming to achieve from your swimming as to how you do those structured swim sessions. But in essence, by doing a structured swim session, it allows you to break it up. Perhaps you're doing 50 meter reps with a short recovery in between each. You can swim those 50 meter reps at a faster pace than you ordinarily would, ultimately meaning that you are going to become a faster swimmer. Of course, there's so many ways that we can string this and it depends really on what you are aiming for. So if you'd like some inspiration on sessions to follow within your swims, then do make sure that you check out some of our previous videos on the channel for some inspiration. And another reason as to why you should subscribe to the channel so that you get all of those future videos. And if you enjoyed today's video, please do give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.